This is Nick with logosbynick.com, and in this tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can create this shiny gold text using Inkscape. But before we get started, if you'd like to learn everything that there is to know about Inkscape, be sure to check out my Inkscape Masterclass. It's a collection of over 60 videos where I go over every tool and feature in Inkscape, and I explain what it is and demonstrate how it works. I'll have a link in the description of the video if you want to check that out. So to get us started here in Inkscape, let's first set up the document so that we all have a similar workflow. Come up here to where it says View, make sure you have Custom selected, and then come up to Zoom and zoom in at one-to-one -one like that. And then we want to make sure that we have snapping disabled for this tutorial. So up here at the very far top left where it says Enable Snapping, go ahead and disable that. And now we'll be good to get started. So uh, the first step is to create some text. So I'm going to grab the text tool right here, and I'm going to click on the canvas to get the blinking cursor. And for this tutorial, I will be using the word gold text. And I'm going to triple click that to highlight all of it and change the font. So let's open up the text editor up here. And the font I'm going to be using for this tutorial is called Ayers, or Ayers, however it's pronounced. Um, I would recommend using this font if you'd like to make this effect work, because uh, for whatever reason, it just works really well with this font. I tried it with other fonts, and it didn't quite look right. But with this font, it really pops. So I'll put a link in the description to where you can download this font for free if you want to give that a try. So go ahead and click Apply now. And now I'm going to make this bigger. So let me grab the Select tool. And I'm going to grab this arrow and just scale this up. I'm going to hold control so it locks the proportions like that. And now what I'm going to do is color this in. In order to make this look like gold, I'm going to have to apply a gradient. And the colors that I use in the gradient are very important. In fact, they're so important that I've written down the color codes for each individual shade of the gradient. And I will post them in the description box of the video so that you can follow along with what I'm doing exactly. You can go ahead and copy and paste them yourself. So. Let's apply a gradient here. I'm going to grab the, uh, the Edit Objects, Colors, Gradients, and Stroke menu right here, the Fill and Stroke menu. You can click that button or press Control, Shift, and F to open that up. And I'm going to come over here under the Fill tab. I'm going to look for where it says Linear Gradient right there and click on that. And then I'm going to grab the Gradient tool. And I'm going to click on this little round stop right here. And I'm going to bring the opacity of that up so that right now it's a gradient going from black to black. So I will take this node right here and put this at the bottom of the gradient, or at the bottom of the text, and I will take this node and put this at the top of the text, and I will hold control so that it's going up vertically, just like that. Okay, so right now we have two different stops in this gradient. This gold color is going to have five stops in it, so I have to add three stops to this gradient. So to do that, I'm just going to double-click on the line right here to add a new stop in there. I'll double-click again to add another one, and then one more. And now what I have to do is select each of these stops and paste the color codes into them. So I'll start at the top right here, working from top to bottom. I'm gonna, I have a notepad opened on my other monitor with these color codes written out that I could just paste in there. Like I said, I will have these in the description box of the video so you can do the same. You could just go ahead and copy and paste them right in. So I'm gonna select each stop and just paste them into the RGBA box here like that, as you see me doing. Take this one as well, paste that in there. Take this one here, paste that in here, and then finally one more to go. I'm just control C to copy, control V to paste, just like that. And now I want to adjust the positions of these colors on the gradient. I want to take this top one and move this a little closer to the top like that. And I want to take this one right here, this middle one, which is like the dark, the darker shade, and bring that towards the top third, or the bottom of the top third of the text right there. Right about there looks pretty good. And then take this one right here and bring this up closer towards that darker one like that. And that right there is the look we're going for. This is starting to, starting to come together. It's starting to look like gold text. Only now we're going to add a little bit of depth to it. So let's grab the Select tool and let's create a duplicate copy of this text. Let's right-click this and go to Duplicate. And let's give this a outline, otherwise known as a stroke. I'm, going to, I'm just going to use the color red for now. I'm going to hold Shift and click on the color red to give that an outline like that. And then I'm going to send that to the back. I'm going to come up here to this button that says Lower Selection to the bottom. Click on that so that it goes behind the original text. And I'll come over here to the Stroke Style tab, and I want to increase the size of this stroke. Maybe not that much. Let me change this to pixels. Let's try something like 6. Or maybe 5. Maybe not that much. I, want, I don't want this to be too thick. Maybe 4.5. That should be pretty good. Okay, that looks good enough right there. 
somewhere thereabouts. It doesn't have to be exactly the same size as mine. So just go ahead and eyeball it. And now I want to give that red outline the same gradient that the gold text has only in reverse. So let's come over here to the stroke paint tab and click on linear gradient. And we're going to choose our gradient from our list over here. And now let's grab the gradient tool so we can adjust the position of that gradient. So right here on the vertical axis, you can see our original gradient. Over here on the horizontal axis, that's the current gradient for the stroke. So what I, what I want to do is do the same thing with the original gradient, only in reverse. If you see here on the original gradient, we have the circle node on top and the square node on the bottom. I want to do the opposite for this one. I want to put the circle node on the bottom. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Put the circle node on the bottom and put the square node on the top. And then again, again, just hold control to lock it onto the vertical axis like that. And there you go. So let's grab this select tool now. Click off of that to deselect everything. It's starting to come together now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break these letters apart and adjust the spacing between them. So let's click and drag over both of these text objects and go to path, object to path, and then ungroup over here where it says ungroup selected groups. And now it's individual letters like that. So I'm gonna click and drag over this letter G. I'm gonna zoom in on this a little bit. I'm gonna hold control and roll up the mouse wheel a couple of times to zoom in. And I'm just gonna hold control. I'm gonna click and drag over this letter G right here so I have both objects selected. And I'm gonna hold control and just move this over like that. I'm just manually adjusting the spacing between these letters here, as you can see. Clicking and dragging over all three letters, moving it in. Then I'm gonna click and drag over the whole word, move that in. And again, while we're doing this, we're holding control on the keyboard so that it locks it onto the vertical axis like that. Okay, that looks pretty good. Move this in. And then finally, this one, this one's a little too close to the T, so I'm gonna move that back just a tiny bit. And maybe I'll put some more space between the two words like that. That right there looks good. So we'll click off of that to deselect everything. Now what I wanna do is unify these letters together. These, these, uh, the letters on top anyway. So I'm gonna click on the letter G, and then I'm gonna hold shift and click on all of the other letters so that we have all of them selected and unify them together by going to path union. And the reason why I do that is because now I want to create uh, sort of like a reflective light or like a shine coming off of the top of this text here. And I'm going to need a duplicate copy of that text to do that. So with the text selected, right click it and go to duplicate and make the duplicate copy white. And now we're going to create a little bit of an offset of this white text right here. So let's come over here to the uh, path effects menu. We'll go to path and click on path effects. And I'm gonna click the plus icon here to add a new path effect. And the path effect we're looking for is offset, which is right here. And with offset enabled, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. What I wanna do is grab the edit paths by nodes tool, which is right here. And what you should be looking for is this little circle node right here. If you notice everything else is a square node, we're looking for this circle node right here. And let me zoom in on that a little bit. And I'm gonna take this circle node and just click and drag that down a little bit, just to give that a little bit of an offset. And what you notice what it's doing here is it's shaving off a little space off of around the edges of the letters like that, which is exactly what we're looking for. Okay, so I'm happy with how that looks. I'm gonna finalize it by going to path, path, object to path, grab this select tool. I'm gonna to press one on the keyboard to zoom back out to 100%. And let's close out of the path effects menu. We don't need that anymore. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create an ellipse going over the top half of this white text here. So let me grab the circles and ellipses tool. I'll click and drag to create an ellipse going over the top of it like that. And uh, I wanna get rid of that outline. Let's hold shift and click the little red X down here to get rid of that outline. And I'm just gonna make this a contrast in color for now, maybe something like green. Bring the opacity down so I can see where it lines up with the rest of the text. And let me grab the select tool right here. Now, if you notice the bottom edge of this green ellipse, I'm paying attention to where it lines up with the text. I want it above this part of the G, but below this part of the G right here, right about here. We want this to be in about the top third of the text, as you see here. I like this position, so I'm gonna leave that as it is. I'm gonna hold shift, click the white text so that we have the green ellipse and the white text selected at the same time and go to path, intersection. And what we have to do now is give this thing a gradient. So let's come over here to the Fill tab and click on the Linear Gradient button. And then grab the Gradient tool over here and take this little uh, white stop over here and put this towards the bottom of that white object. And then take this circle stop and put this towards the top. I'm gonna hold Control 
to lock it onto the vertical axis like that. Now, if you notice, I'm not putting this exactly at the bottom of the white text there. I'm putting it slightly below so it's not so, it's not so harsh. And this one right here, this is not going all the way up to the top. I'm putting this down to about here like that. And at this point, you may have to adjust the position of the original gradient. So let me click on the gold text. And I'm going to take this. If you notice, I'm going to take this stop right here and bring that down a little bit. And bring this down a little bit as well. Maybe bring this down to here. Whoops, messed up there. If you mess up and do something like this, just hit Control-Z on the keyboard to undo what you just did. Okay, that's looking, that's looking pretty good right there. Okay, so let me grab the Select tool. Click off of it to deselect everything. And the final step would be to add a little bit of a drop shadow to this to make it pop a little more. So to do that, I'm going to click on the gold text. I'm going to duplicate it by pressing Control D on the keyboard. And I'm going to make that black. And I'm going to bring this down slightly. Down, I'm going to bring it down slightly and to the right slightly. And I'm going to lower that to the bottom with this button over here that says lower selection to the bottom. Maybe even use the arrow keys to adjust it a little bit. That right there is pretty good. And I will give this a little bit of a blur, just like that. And then finally bring the opacity down a little bit. Maybe reduce the blur, reduce the opacity. And you get the idea, you can just play with it a little bit. And as you can see, we've finished creating our gold text. Now, one final thing, I would, I would recommend using this for a dark background. For whatever reason, this gold text effect really pops better on dark backgrounds. So let me create a rectangle going over this whole thing like this. Let me bring the opacity of that all the way up. Grab the select tool, lower that to the bottom, and maybe make this like a lighter shade of gray. Over here where it says fill, I'm going to select HSL, and I'm going to look at this L row like this and just bring that down a little bit. And then hold shift and click on the text and uh, center it up using the uh, alignment menu. So I'm going to open up the align and distribute menu over here and set this the relative to, set it to last selected, center it on the vertical and horizontal axis like that. And you may want to adjust the drop shadow, drop shadow a little bit. So let me zoom in a little more. Let me just bring this out. Let me go back to the fill and stroke menu. Maybe give this, bring the opacity of it up now since it's on a darker background. Maybe make that a little darker. And I think I, I will call it a day right there. So that should do it for this tutorial. That is how you can go about creating that gold text using Inkscape. So if you have any questions, just leave a comment below. And as always, thanks for watching.